Hey everyone, Leo Bond here. I'm back again today for the blog at Best Buy Canada, and this time I'm looking at the Sphero Star Wars BB-9E app-enabled droid, which is of course an all-new droid character for Star Wars Episode VIII, The Last Jedi. And in this video, I'll discuss several of his coolest features and key specs. We'll see how some of them work and what they look like, and I'll show BB-9E alongside Sphero's other new Star Wars droids, R2-D2 and BB-8, which are all controlled by the very same app, the Spiro Droids app, through either your iOS or Android-based smart device via Bluetooth Smart. So whichever device you have, you're covered and ready to go either way, although as of the date of this video, Windows and Chrome devices are not yet compatible, and I really don't know if they ever will be. But anyway, one item of note here is that you will need a fairly recent or up-to-date device and operating system to get the most out of your droid. My Galaxy S5 phone would not work with some of the app features at first, although this does seem to have at least partially resolved itself now. But initially, I had to borrow my wife's more recent release iPhone to make features like the AR holographic simulation and the watch with me work. So just a little heads up there, and I would strongly recommend checking Spiro's online FAQs to see if your device is going to be compatible with your droid of choice before you run off and order one. Now, before we get into some of BB-9E's best features, let's just take a quick look at the styling of this evil First Order droid, whose color scheme is primarily made up of black and gray, which certainly seems appropriate, and I honestly really like this design a whole lot. I especially like the fact that BB-9E's head is slightly differently shaped from that of BB-8 who has more of the domed style, and this just further helps to distinguish between the two characters. But what's even cooler still is the fact that BB-9E's head actually has built-in LEDs that glow in red and blue, and they really add a lot of extra personality to the character. So overall, I'm extremely happy with BB-9E's aesthetics. Now, as for the charging time, it's a little bit difficult to precisely pin down for these Sphero ball droids, but it definitely took a lot longer than with R2-D2. And I'm going to have to lay it out as a range and say that it's probably somewhere in between 2 and 3 hours. And just like with Sphero's other ball droid, BB-8, the charging for 9E here works via induction. So there's a special charging cradle that you place your BB-9E in, and a red flashing light will let you know that the charging is underway, and that should turn solid once the charging is complete, giving you roughly 60 minutes of total playtime. Although BB-9E is a lot less active when you're using the Watch With Me feature from the app, so he should last through an entire movie. But anyway, speaking of the Watch With Me feature, we'll actually take a look at that right now, as it is one of my favorites, because all you have to do is sit back and watch one of the Star Wars saga films with your BB-9E and see how he reacts to what's happening on the screen. And the reactions aren't necessarily super active or over the top. It's mostly just typical droid chitter-chatter and wriggling around when something significant happens. But sometimes it also seems almost random. And I did find that at times all all three droids would react to the same scene and at other times only one or two of them would react so I concluded that they're not all programmed to react to the same sequences which is very cool because it means that they each kind of have their own individual personalities. Now at the present time not yet all of the films from the Sega are programmed to work with this feature but those that aren't yet there are meant to be coming soon. Anyway, another cool thing about 9E here is that he comes with an all new piece of hardware called the Droid Trainer, which is basically just a platform with a rounded cradle for BB-9E to sit in while you test out some of his different features. And it's very effective at keeping him from rolling away on you at inopportune times. And as you can see here, it allows him to roll as fast as he wants in any direction, but he never actually goes anywhere. And I absolutely love that because ball droids tend to have a nasty habit of just taking off and running into things like walls and table legs and then of course their head pops off and it flies under the fridge or someplace where you can't easily retrieve it and the droid trainer is just a really great system for keeping that from happening. So while I've got him in there, I'll just go ahead and show one of his features that really requires an awful lot of space. And it's the one where you use your finger to trace out a path on your device's screen for BB-9E to follow, and he then follows that path perfectly. And since this thing has a 30 meter range, you might want to try this feature in a place roughly the size of a tennis court, because that's probably not too far off from what your device 
Texas screen actually represents in terms of real area or floor space that this bot can cover. So it's a really fun feature, but not one that's great for in the house, at least not for most people's houses. Now, some other features of BB9E include an enhanced radio system with special sensors that can detect and react to your presence. And, of course, there's a holographic simulation feature where he patrols the interior of the Mega Star Destroyer Supremacy in augmented reality, which is one of the main reasons why Sphero included the droid trainer. And I have to say that between the time that I tested my R2-D2 and have now later tested BB9E here, this feature went from not working at all on my Samsung Galaxy S5 phone to now working with it perfectly. So here I'm showing you some screen capture footage of the interior of the Supremacy, and it's actually quite cool it's kind of got a blueprint sort of look to it but there is a lot of detail and you can unlock these little pop-up boxes with different information in them so it's quite interactive and I do suspect that most people will probably enjoy it quite a bit Anyway, BB9E also has the Droid to Droid Experience feature where he can interact with R2-D2 or BB-8. Or, at least he should have that feature, although it doesn't quite seem to be available in my app yet. So I'm guessing that that one's coming along very soon. And there's bound to be some trouble when those three droids all get together. Now, as for the build quality of this bot, well, he is pretty tough. He's got a very durable polycarbonate outer shell. And he actually feels very solid and well made, which is no surprise for a Sphero product, honestly. And, you know, I figure he should be able to withstand pretty much anything that those pesky resistance droids can throw at him. And I've kind of tried to recreate what I think the interactions of these bots might look like just by having a couple of them up and roaming around at the same time. Although at this point, I can really only speculate as to what the droid to droid experience might actually look like. Anyway, that's all I've got to say about BB9E for now. So far, I really like this evil little droid, but that opinion will only strengthen if he has a major role in The Last Jedi or weaken if he doesn't. So that's my two cents. I really hope you enjoyed the video, but if you'd like to see even more, be sure to check out my complete written review at Best Buy Canada's blog, and that will do it for me for now, but do stay tuned for more reviews of cool toys that are coming up very, very soon. For now, I'd just like to thank you all for watching. Have an excellent day, and I'll see you soon.